guys, we've mentally shut off now because we're so <laughs> scarred. So can we go back to the jump scares, please? I love a good jump scare in horror films and in House there was just loads that really caught me off guard. What are some of like your lot favourite moments from or just scenes from horror films that you've seen that have really like stuck with you? So a lot of us are quite scared of horror films um, so we've sort of avoided them not because they're bad because they're really good and we not sleep for weeks <laughs> um, and so we pretty much watched every horror film under like in the last decade or under the sun and they've sort of started so me and Haley kind of went through the whole roster because right from the beginning to the end of the film he sort of started on the jump scares and then when it got to like Caroline's bit where she's smacking her head into the um keyboard uh then it got a bit more gory at one point me and Haley just text them and got, we were like guys we've mentally shut off now because we're so <laughs> scarred so can we go back to the jump scares please because this isn't working because we're now actually just shutting down so all emotional <laughs> response well, I'm more like I, I don't like the sort of really gory stuff like in um in hostel when they like cut the person's Achilles like stuff like that I just I can't deal with it I'm it's just no yeah no <laughs> it's, just, it's so horrible and, oh no which is which is fun because I got sort of the bloodiest death I think it was great because I, I feel like it's kind of helped me get over my fear of it all because I'm like oh I know how they did it oh uh, yeah <laughs> so, that's, so that's quite fun with filming a normal horror film, you can sort of escape the intensity and the horror of it all by just like leaving the set. But this wasn't the case for all of you as you were filming everything at home. How did you like support each other through the process to ensure that the spirits remained high? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I mean, I think because we're all friends anyway, we we're all really kind of, open with each other and really supportive um but also like when we'd cut we'd kind of we'd be texting each other and being like like really supportive or like how are you doing it like are you all right um and then also like the people that we live with were all so supportive and really um heavily involved so like I live with my parents so they um bless them sat in the garden for two weeks um <laughs> and brought a kettle with them <laughs> and like they're so cute bless them they're so lovely and then and like my mum was sort of she was as soon as we finished filming for the day my mum would get in like and cook loads of food so that the next day we all had food prepared and stuff and Aww. yeah it was so lovely it was just like that kind of real sort of family support within the team and the crew but then also with the people that we live with um was it was really lovely We'd also play ABBA, so Rob would play, us, Rob would play us horror films, we'd do the scene, then Dancing Queen ABBA would come on afterwards, and we'd all have a boogie, so it would all be fine. <laughs> Just to like refresh yourself after everything, a bit of ABBA. So I heard that this film was actually born out of a scary prank the like director played with his friends on Zoom, um, which got me thinking like throughout the filmmaking process, did any of you like ever try to do a prank on each other or scare each other? I, I no. feel like we, I mean, we kind of did, but as part of the film. So when we were shooting my initial, um, the initial pullback of my chair, the girl, like, so part of the script, we didn't, we didn't know how each other was going to die. We didn't know uh, like any sort of spooky things that were going to happen in each other's houses so that we could be kind of surprised while filming. And one of the ones was, so for my, the pullback, so none of the girls knew that was going to happen. Hayley, what's going on? And Rob and I had arranged ahead of time that my partner had rigged me up and he was hiding around the corner and we had kind of arranged the camera so that you couldn't actually see him or the ropes. And I uh, remember like counting down to that in the scene and waiting for like Rob to signal to me when, because um, he would send a message in chat signal for that and being like trying to keep a straight face and like be in the scene where I'm supposed to be yelling and screaming but then also like being like excited that I was about to scare them for real so I feel like that was like mildly a prank um that we happened to actually then use for the film well, think it's funny, 
people Salem as well Haley. Haley knew all the, all the secrets we thought that Salem was an actual medium because that's what we've been told that an actual medium is going to perform all these seances every time so we would you know close every after a scene we would all close the seance properly and then after the film after everything was done we found out oh actually Selena is an actress <laughs> she to do. she's not a medium and and she was just spot on because every time we're like um do we need to close the seance she's like oh, um yeah okay let's uh just you know close your eyes and yeah imagine the rope and <laughs> do all this stuff but she was she was great so they pulled that prank on us yeah do I remember anything else? Oh, sorry. No, so I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I love Zoom. <laughs> so, <laughs> me too, my favourite platform. <laughs> <laughs> so throughout this year, we've all had to adapt, well, to the challenges of communicating through Zoom. What a timely question. Um, whether it be online lessons, like I'm experiencing at the moment, or pub quizzes. Like, but in terms of filmmaking process, what were the advantages of making a film through Zoom? Definitely the continuous takes. This was exhausting emotionally like for us because when we were doing these big crying scenes there was uh, one full day where me, Hayley and Emma were just non-stop crying and because you don't get that respite of like lights resetting or camera changing a lens or you just all like hair and makeup touch-ups because none of us wore makeup or had anything to do with our hair as you can clearly tell in the film. Um, these guys were great. <laughs> but like it was this constant emotional like beating because we were just like reset and Rob loves to do loads and loads of takes. It was like we would be crying and then it would be like, okay, just reset, reset your phone, reset your phone. So that was really good because the amount of footage that, Radina, how much is it that um, Brenna, our incredible uh, editor, had to deal with at the end was just hours and hours. 180. 180. Yeah, and not just wow. one not just one load. I mean, how many of us were up at this one time, you know, on the, in these little square boxes and then the, the sort of guideline from the Zoom recording. So that was really advantageous. And then Emma with her filters, I mean, uh, Stephen Bray, did, uh, who was doing the VFX, sort of did all these incredible filters and put them on every single thing on the Zoom list and was like, how can we use this to our advantage and make it into, into sort of like a little horror trick that we can play on the audience. It was just so great to just see like relatable horror characters who are sort of like your average friend group and not just like these cliche characters who just seem to be falling into like all the traps and everything so um but like what are your favorite cliches in horror films i like the but why would you go in there like <laughs> why would you go in there like which is why i like in in heist like i don't go in the loft because <laughs> I mean, there's no way I would but like why that's why I like sort of my reactions to that section because as in my character's reactions because in a horror film you just shout it at the screen you're like why would you do that um yeah I, th th I think that's sort of like yeah that's my favorite cliche because you can get really angry at the characters oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a cliche but I always feel like in horror films like you when you have a character who's a particularly like unlikable character they seem to um. always get a terrible death and it feels somewhat satisfying that like the only film type of film or like I guess situation where actually when people are terrible they get what's coming to them a little bit. In most horror films when you see sort of the payoff of something so like we saw the clown and actually I thought the clown was gonna play a role in the end of it because we didn't see what happened in the end like you know we we were kept to like really quiet like in sort of blindfolded about what was going on in other people's scenes so when I saw the clown come back with teddies I was like oh and actually they didn't so like that was that was a real clever thing that uh, you know everyone did because I was waiting for that payoff to happen because if you see something you know it's going to get used in the end like if there's a massive sword above a door you're like someone's gonna, that's gonna fall and slice someone in two like so seeing that again I was like oh okay that's not a cliche the clown isn't gonna get used Brahms Brahms is the name of the clown by the way sorry <laughs> Yeah, I made I made I made him a Twitter account, and he got more uh, more likes and subscribers than me. So I got rid of it. I was jealous. <laughs> I was jealous. So as the film was 
well, the film was filmed entirely in isolation and through Zoom. You weren't only the actors, but also camera operators. So did you receive much direction and training to do this? Yeah, so we had, um, before we actually started shooting, we had like a couple of sessions where we sort all the lighting and everything out. So we already knew kind of the state of play for how we do things technically. Because at the start of every take, we all had to clap and then we all had to clap at the same <laughs> time. So we practiced that. Um, I don't think we ever quite, managed to do it despite Maybe having it about a hundred times. <laughs> so um, this year's certainly been challenging for like all areas of the film industry but with Host you've proven that it's possible to still make a film of a re like a very high standard so do you think we'll see more films of like a DIY nature having a big success? That's why we do it isn't it? It's why we create and make film is when you find the things around you like Radina said and make the most of it and then if you make something that other people enjoy too, I think that's the beauty of creating. Sometimes we get our head in this space where we're like, you know, it's got to be this amount of budget and this big and, you know, these cameras. And, and actually sometimes it's not, it's just the creativity of it. It's so great to see like all the passion behind the project. Thank you so much for all your time. I've really had such a great just time talking to you and finding out more about the film and everything. So I really appreciate it. And thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for having me.